Kia Pia. Where you at? Where you at? Kia Pia. That's me. Kia Pia. That's me. Kia Pia. Yeah, that's me. What's up, Kia Bia gang, and welcome to Zakia Chanel Podcast. This isn't just a regular podcast. It's a place where we can let down our guards and be our authentic selves. So let's talk about it. The real, the tough, and the funny conversations. At the end of each episode, I want you to walk away feeling better than you did at the start. All right, enough of me talking. Breathe in, breathe out. Now let's get into the episode. What's up, Kia Bia gang? I am back again with another, another, another podcast for you. Uh, welcome to season two. This is something new, something different. We are starting again, guys. And I'm so excited. I know it has been a minute, but baby girl is back and she is better than ever. So yes, welcome to season two of Zakia Chanel podcast. Welcome to all of my new Kia Bia gang who just joined the game. Make sure that you subscribe, make sure that you share and let everybody know to come to the best Detroit podcast there ever. <laughs> Your girl right here. Okay, so stop. Let me, let me start back over. Um, but yes, yeah, so welcome to season two episode one and if you all do not know we start with our praise break so that is something that we're going to continue to do in season two and my praise break for this episode is season two like this is my praise break I'm happy that I took the break I'm happy that I was able to restructure some things happy to um rethink how i want certain things to go and just the flow of just my podcast in general and getting back to my ambition and my passion for it and making sure that i gave you guys quality other than just like quantity i didn't want to just throw out episodes just to say i threw them out but i wanted to make sure every episode is quality and that you're actually leaving with something meaningful that you can apply to your real life so Let's go ahead and get into the episode for today. The title is called Before the Next. So, Before the Next. As I thought about this episode, I was like, wow, okay, I'm ending different things in my life and I am on a move to a lot of other things that is going on. And I had to sit down and realize like, wait, before I just run into the next thing, before I start just going into what I want to do next and all my other goals that I have, I wanted to make sure that I paid attention to where I'm at now and celebrating the now before the next thing comes, whatever that next could be. And so for me, um, I wanted to talk about not just graduating from master's school and graduate school. Um, I wanted to talk about the journey through it because I don't think that no one really understands or know the difficulty or the hard work that goes into uh, grad school and anything I think after like getting your undergrad is just it's it's hard and I believe that it's not just hard because of the classes and stuff but that you're also trying to just live life like you're trying to become a young adult and you're trying to maneuver and get grooving in your natural everyday activities and things and responsibilities while also trying to achieve this next thing this big thing for yourself and so that big next thing for me was grad school. And I am thankful that I was able to go to grad school. I'm thankful that I took the year off after undergrad to know exactly what I wanted to go to grad school for. And not just throwing myself in there because I felt like I would have wasted my time. I would have been coming out of pocket. And it would have been something that it was just went a little bit different than what I wanted. And so I made sure through that year that break that I really talked to God about it and that I prayed and asked him to reveal first, should I go to grad school? What should I go to grad school for and what school to go to? Everything that I did leading up to grad school was all through God. There was nothing where I just came up and thought of everything on my own. Everything was led by him. And that's what made this journey so, so special. I mean, undergrad was special, 
but my relationship with God is so much closer right now. And so I had gotten every decision that I made going to grad school. And um, grad school was very different than undergrad just because, like I said, I had to really go through life. And so like the first challenge was first, I wanted to make sure that I did not pay for grad school. Anyway, anything that I could come up with, I wanted to just make sure that I didn't want to come out of pocket because that was something important to me. And so I worked with my job and all of this and that to get it paid for. And by the grace of God, everything was clear. And when I first signed off on it, I thought that I was going to have to pay for my last semester. So when my last semester came, I was already prepared to put my tuition money to the side to pay for it. And when I found out that I didn't have to, that pushed me to just get through this last year in the last semester by myself with just knowing that it's paid for. And all I need to do is go to class and get the grades that I needed to get. But then life happened and life became very hard, very challenging more than I more, more than I could have ever imagined and so within my first year of grad school I did an excellent job it took me a minute to try to balance going to work and doing school and doing other things I had to learn how to first balance and understand that it doesn't have to be a perfect balance but a balance where you're not putting in so much to one thing that you lose energy on something else and that was something challenging for me because I would work hard at work and then when it was time to go to class or do work for class, I didn't have no more energy. I didn't know what to do. And so that's when workout came a big thing for me. I had to make sure that I worked out, that I did something that took that break from work and school so that once I started the next part two of my day, that it felt like I was rejuvenated. It felt like, okay, I can do this. And it wasn't that I was just trying to run through things. And then the second challenge was, um, I think it was still my first semester. Going into my second semester, I lost my grandfather. And that was something very difficult because I've never lost anyone so close to me in my life. And I was just stuck. And so I had to use... I had to try to use it to motivate me and continue to push and be like, okay, I know my granddad would want me to make sure that I'm working hard and that I'm not slacking because of this thing. The hard part was that I lost him during COVID. And so that was something different, but we're not going to get into that because that could be a whole other episode by itself. But um, yeah, so that was the challenging part is I had lost my grandfather and I wasn't able to grieve the way I wanted to because I was still working and that I was still trying to take classes. So the time off, the time to just grieve or to try to get your brain back on track, that wasn't it for me. Like I had to figure out how to do it while still moving. And although it was hard, I I found a way, some way, somehow to start not just sitting in that place, but trying to make sure that I continue to do well and succeed in my grad program. And then um, life was good for a minute. And then 2020 hit. Well, honestly, it was like December of 2021 before 2022 came. And baby, um, life is just, it took a different toll for me that I was not expecting at all. Um... I dealt with death literally like every month since December, uh, whether it was someone that I personally knew, um, like a relationship that I had, or it was someone close to me who had lost someone very close to them. And people don't understand when there's different type of like grieving, there's different type of loss emotions that you deal with. And it's, it's not just a person you don't just grieve when you lose someone, but it could be someone close to you who has lost someone and you're grieving for them because your emotions are so attached to that person. And so I dealt with that and I was becoming like emotionally drained, y'all. Like, no lie, it was so hard. Honestly, this whole 2020, every semester that I took was very hard because I was just like, I just don't know 
like how much more I could take while I was still trying to do school. Like what? This is crazy. And um, I was all right. But then once I started losing people, like literally in my family um, and having to go out of town, that's a whole nother thing. Like when you go out of town for a funeral, you're like trying to be with your family. You're trying to be in the present while also trying to make sure that you take care of the stuff that you need to take care of back at home. And so I was like staying up late at night to try to get as much papers and work done so that when I go out of town for the funeral that I'm not just spending so much time doing work that I'm not in a present moment with my family during this time. And so I was just like, y'all, like, I didn't know what to do. And honestly, y'all, it, it was just me trusting in God every step of the way. Every day, I just had to ask God, like, just give me the strength to just get through this day. We'll worry about tomorrow when tomorrow comes. But until then, like, this is what we're going to focus on. It's just give me the strength to get through this. And I was getting through it. And everything was, you know, getting a little better. And then um, June hit. And that was probably, I think, yes, that was like the first month that I didn't have to deal with going to no funeral. Didn't hear, have to worry about anybody passing away. No one close to me. No one that I knew. Someone else that passed. Like, it was good. And so I was finally feeling like I was getting back into motivation and ambition and stuff. And honestly, you probably would have told, like, you could tell through my podcast of, like, me not being consistent because I just could not find the 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 consistency in the motivation to even do my podcast like I, that was like a whole extra thing that I just did not have the capacity for and I knew it and so that's what I said like at the beginning I just did not want to just do um so much so much quantity just so many oh I threw out all these episodes I stayed on track with that and all of it was trash but two I didn't want to do that so I had to just Take that sacrifice of just stepping back for a minute and knowing that, like, I cannot give the energy I want at this moment. And that's okay because, you know, I'm going to have the energy when God, you know, provide that for me. And so then this is what I got to do best for me. And then July hit and, uh, yeah, I think, yes, it was July and my cousin passed away. And that one was just, like, the the death the not even just the death like it was just so unexpected and so it just took a different turn I think for everyone and for myself it was just like okay God is if this is what I have to become used to then allow me like expand me Lord to have that type of emotion energy in my body to be able to deal with it in a healthy way and still move on because I did not have any room for that and I was just like God like I thought we were I thought I was getting back on track like you ain't you ain't tell me about this like (laughs) did we miss a meeting did I did I miss something that you were supposed to tell me because what this is not what I wanted this is not what I expected but obviously in life things come when things that you don't expect that's a part of life and you have to figure out how to keep going through it and so yeah it was just very crazy y'all and um to be very transparent like no one really I don't think anyone understand how hard it was um sometimes when you go through things you try to keep certain things to yourself because you don't know what you can share with someone because you don't want that thing to be damaged or you don't want the bad energy or uh the spirits around it that isn't the best you know you want it to be where it's all coming from God and you want it to stay so pure and so um authentic and so real and genuine that sometimes you don't want to share with people just yet until God allows you and so through this time anyway I was just really like dealing with a lot in the inside and so when I went to that funeral my aunt had asked me to do a praise dance and I could not say no. I haven't danced, especially praise dance in like, I don't know, y'all, six years or so. And then on top of that, like I said, I was still trying to grieve all these other passes while still trying to 
figure out my work and all this and that and other things in my life while still trying to go to school in person and still do my work. Like, y'all, what? What is life? And so I was just like, yeah. When I tell y'all, the dance came within like three days because I did not have time to practice. I didn't know really. I knew what I knew what song because God gave me that much. But everything else, I was just like, we just going to rock with it. We just going to see what happens. And so um, I'm still not going to share all of it right now because I think that God is still pouring into it. So I'm going to be very cautious of how much I um, say right now. But just that during that time when I went, I had a different experience than I've ever had. And so what makes all of this really crazy is that, or not even crazy, but just like something that you that you don't expect of is that um, I kept having to go back to where my family is from uh, for the funerals. And so all of our funerals was in the same place. So imagine going to the same funeral home, literally like back to back every other month. Your, your body just don't even want to see this place. And so I was just not even wanting to go for that simple fact that I didn't even want to see the building in of itself. But once I got there, um, my cousin and I had a different something shifted. And thank you to her, it shifted the way I saw that building in itself that like it doesn't have to be negative. Like God is saying that this can be the start of something new. And so, like, my title is before the next, like, we have to celebrate this thing. And, you know, we celebrating my cousin's life and everything that he did. And we celebrate where we're at in our life and how we can prepare for the next things. But celebrate how much you have come, like, how much you have grown through this whole entire journey by itself. And so that's what that became to me. And so I came back home with, with that type of mindset ready and I was so, like, my brain was so ready for, like, what was next that, like, I totally was not even paying attention to, like, my present anymore and anything else. Like, I was just trying to, like, get through school. I didn't care no more. I was just like, whatever. Like, I just want to hurry up and just be done with this. And so I got a wake-up call. Like, I never failed a quiz, a test, or nothing at grad school. I've always done well. And I thought I studied. <laughs> I probably didn't study that much like I usually do but I was like I'm I mean it ain't that hard y'all when I say I failed this test like failed and we didn't even have that many assignments before then so my grade went from an A to a D like that and I was just like what God like <laughs> you I got a D in this class how do I supposed to get this all the way back up to an A hopefully just a B in itself like how can I get this to be something and God was just like you're so focused on the next day I had to wake you up and tell you like that you gotta you gotta look at where you at now like this is a prayer that you pray for so I answered your prayer and you got the nerve to think about something else and praying about something else when you can't even fulfill what I just gave to you in this moment no nah, like something gotta change you gotta you gotta get back on the groove like you gotta get back to what you're supposed to and how you're supposed to do it because if you can't, if I answer this prayer for you, you can't even do it the right way and you can't complete it the right way. How do I know that you're prepared and ready for the next thing that you're praying about, that you're so excited about, that you really want to do? And I was like, OK, like, dang. All right. And so that was my thing where I was just like, all right, cool. Let's, you know, get this back together and, you know, thank, thank God for my, my professor, like. He was able to work with me, um, boosted my grade up with that test. He did not have to, like, because like I said, I failed it. And when he boosted that thing up, that thing went from a D to a B. I said, I can work with a B because I can, I can, <laughs> we got a long rest of the semester to go. I can get this back to an A, but I didn't know how, I was, like, y'all, I was so devastated. I'm on my phone. You, anybody who went to any type of college class whatever you know it's like <laughs> it's real and you don't know if you go pass or not 
when you pull out your phone and you start calculating, like, okay, if I if I get at least this on this, on these next assignments, all right, where do that put me in my uh grade for the class? Like, am I still gonna do good? Do I gotta do better on this stuff? It I literally was pulling out my phone, doing all different types of calculations, like, okay, how can we do something about this? Um, but yeah, so after that, I was able to just go and it was very hard like these past weeks have been tough hard this month in itself was just difficult i literally in class just like ready to be done it wasn't like it was the class itself it wasn't like like i mean i've been doing this for almost two years so it wasn't like it was anything that was draining or nothing that i was not interested in i love my program that i've done it's just i just felt like i I was just through with it like I was checked out and so God was like I understand I know that you're going through a lot and I know that you might feel checked out but you got to complete this and you got to complete it the right way so I had to switch my mindset I had to change everything and I had to look at it as this is a prayer this is something that I wanted and so fulfilled it the correct way and that's what I feel like this whole um this whole podcast is about is just understanding where you're at in the present moment and celebrating no matter how old you are how young you are we're always looking for what's next whether we're in middle school we're looking for how what I'm what high school I'm going to what I'm about to do in high school in high school you're looking at what college I'm about to do what what college I'm about to go to, what I'm about to do after high school. In college, you're trying to figure out if you're about to go to grad school, if you're going to go to any other school, or are you about to just go into the workforce, what you're about to do with your life. Like everything in life, every moment, even when once you're done with school and you're at work, you're like, is this just a nine to five job? Or am I supposed to be starting a business? Or am I? is this my career? Or is this just a job? Like we're always questioning where we're at in the moment. And I think to a certain degree, it is okay to question because at times you need that to continue to push you and move you into truly what God has for you. And this might just be a pit stop in the, in the um, journey and in the ride. And all right, before we continue our conversation, make sure to follow me on all of my personal social media accounts to stay updated on what I am doing. You can follow me on Instagram at underscore Kia Z, underscore K-I-A-A-Z. You can follow me on Facebook at Kia Brewer. You can follow me on Snapchat at Fabulous Kia underscore four. Or you can follow me on TikTok as a Kia Brewer. But make sure that you follow our podcast page as well on Instagram as a Kia Chanel podcast. Okay, so where do we leave off at? And the next thing is to come, but we also have to give ourselves grace and we have to give, we have to give praise to God, like for real, that we're in that present moment and to just really enjoy that time. Because when we look up and we're on to the next thing, we're going to look back and be like, dang, I really did that. And I didn't even celebrate myself the way I wanted to. Like, I, I had to sit down and realize that. And I think that's what really made me understand, like, before the next, before whatever I go into, I got to, I have to, I have to congratulate myself. I have to pat myself on the back and say, good job, because I didn't, I didn't have to do this. I didn't know if I was going to be good at this. Like, I was, I didn't know what grad school was, never prepared for it, never was, never knew how to do it, because I never done it before. And so... For me, I'm sitting back and I'm like, I'm looking at the hood that they gave me when you graduate from grad school. And I'm like, I did that. I did that. No one could have taught me how to do that. No one could have been in the class. I don't know many people who have a a master's degree. And so I was able to do that. And I did it well. And I I did it while having to figure out other things in my life. And so... I have to pat myself on the pat on the back. And so that's why I'm telling you all to just pat yourself on the back and congratulate yourself in your present moment. Celebrate where you're at. Celebrate what you're doing. And, you know, be able to ask yourself questions to know what your next is. But before the next, just be able to celebrate where you're at right now and all the accomplishments, all the success you have, the achievements you've done, everything in this journey and in this year. 
just enjoy it live in a moment and be able to not just be so in the future of what's next be here be right now in the present moment and so that is basically the episode i kind of just said everything um usually i leave with like an inspirational quote or inspirational question and this segment is going to change to run with this and run with this is basically just a segment where we give a conclusion of everything we talked about in the episode honestly it's going to be whatever pops in my head but run with this is something that you can just take within the little 20 seconds I'm giving you right now and run with it for the rest of the time. Run with this. Run with congratulating yourself, celebrating yourself, paying yourself on the back and saying that you did that. Look in the mirror and say you did that because what? You didn't know you could do it and now you're standing in the moment and you did it. So stand in that present moment, be able to look at everything you've done, ask about the future, but do not run to the future without being present in the moment and celebrating where you at now so run with that um thank you again for tuning in to season two episode one of the kia chanel podcast the kia b again you are now a part of our family give me a hug give me a hug if you're watching this on youtube you see i'm giving you a hug if you're listening on my different other streaming platforms visualize me giving you a hug all right so make sure you stay tuned i will be back for episode two and until then Enjoy life, guys. Enjoy life. Hey, don't leave me hanging. Before you leave, make sure that you subscribe to Zakia Chanel Podcast. You can listen to my podcast on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music, Buzzsprout, Google Podcasts, and SoundCloud. Or you can go over to Zakia Chanel TV on YouTube to listen and watch the podcast. Looking for someone to host your event? Or you want to learn how to start your own podcast. Or you need organizing tips. I'm your girl. You can contact me via email. You can also reach out to me via email if you need any advice on anything. At Zakia Chanel Podcast at gmail.com. Remember, it starts with you. Be blessed and take care of yourself.